How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. And today I want to talk about something that I broke the internet with. Um, next week we're going to start building the Dana 30 in the cheap Cherokee project that we're doing. And it's actually a low pinion Dana 30. And when I said we're going to be building a low pinion Dana 30, the internet broke. It, li it literally broke. And there was comments along the lines like the low opinion Dana 30 ain't no good. They never should have put them in there. It's only the high opinions that are good. Um, that's the only ones you need to run. Uh, all this stuff. There's so much drama and arguments over a low opinion and a high opinion Dana 30. And today I'm going to actually clear that up. Because it seems like there's a trend that goes around. When I did the eight and a quarter build, if you haven't seen that yet, go back on the channel. I'll put it right here somewhere and in the description below. I rebuilt a eight and a quarter and made it strong as an eight eight. I don't care what anybody says; it's just as strong as an eight eight. Um, maybe even a little bit stronger. So I think it's a trend. People were doing the eight eight swaps, saying they were a lot better. People have I've noticed a lot of people will say the eight eight's better and stronger, but they don't even have one. They're still running the eight and a quarter. Um, I know people that don't even do anything with the eight and a quarter, and they're running thirty sevens, and they're just born the crap out of that Jeep and it's actually held up pretty decent. They break some axle shafts, but it's held up pretty good. So I'm going off experience here and I think a lot of it is a trend. People jump on the bandwagon of a trend. And when I go against the trend or somebody else, they start coming at you with nasty comments and stuff like that saying how you're doing it wrong, it's never gonna last. But they'd have no real world experience. I have. Um, First off, I'm going to say I had a high pinion Dana 30 and beat the crap out of it. And me and my dad had to rebuild rebuild the front end because the pinion bearing went out because it couldn't handle the stress of the big tires. And that was a stock Dana 30. We rebuilt that thing in the yard with used Dana 30 parts and the guy's still running it today. I sold it a while back. Well, it's been years ago. He's still running it today the way that I left it. So... And I've also seen low pinion Dana 30s do the exact same thing. I've seen high pinion Dana 30s eat the ring gear clear off. Low pinion Dana 30s, the same exact thing. So I'm going to be talking about something that you can use. I'm not going to be selling you anything. I'm not going to be just running off the head. This is real world experience. So let's go over here to this paper and I can explain it to you a little bit better and you'll get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So as you see, we have a high pinion and a low pinion. And I marked it in red where the pinion would hit the ring gear, the lower side and the higher side. And this is going forward. Now, what we're gonna be talking about is where it hits at and basically what it does real quick. Um, a lot of people think that it makes it weaker in my opinion, I think it just wears a little faster. So you have your high pinion, you have your ring gear, and you have your pinion, and it comes in and hits at the top of the ring gear. Like this would be inside your axle housing. This would be the top of the ring gear. And what this does is, um, when you're going forward, when you lock it in four wheel drive, it actually pulls the pinion into the ring gear and it lets it bite a little harder. Um, and also you get a better angle with your drive line with a high pinion Dana 30 because when you have your drive shaft coming in, it's really not at a steep angle um, with the high pinion Dana 30. So that's one of the benefits of a high pinion and it just bites a little bit harder and uh, it's in a little bit better location. Now when it comes to the low pinion Dana 30, as you can see the pinion bites at the bottom of the ring gear. And what this does, it pushes away the pinion from the ring gear and it puts a little bit more load on your drive line. Um, that's basically the difference between a high pinion and a low pinion um, where they bite at. And another thing is with a low pinion, you have a stronger angle with your drive line because I'm setting it it's almost six inches and you know, absolutely a high pinion would make a better drive shaft angle and a low pinion is a lot steeper. But that's basically the difference between the two. Everything else is pretty much the same. Now that you have a better idea of what I'm talking about, and you know the difference between a high pinion and a low pinion Dana 30, which I'll put a picture up 
This is high pinion, this is low pinion. You can see the difference. Basically, a lot of people are like me. A low pinion Dana 30 will work. Uh, I'm gonna build it up and it's gonna last. I am sacrificing a little bit of ground clearance with a low pinion Dana 30 um, and a little bit of caster. Now, that's the thing with a low pinion Dana 30. With the lift that I'm running, it's hard to get the caster dialed in perfect. I have it close, the Jeep drives great, but I could get it way better than that. So what we're gonna be doing is a cut and turn with the C's, um, with the low pinion, so I can actually get my pinion angle back to where it needs to be I'm turning the C's back to where I can get my caster. So that's something you might have to do. It just depends how much lift you're running. I'm running six inches. We're gonna be doing the cut and turn. Uh, but regardless of what people say, low pinion or high pinion, build that sucker up and use common sense. Um, we are not going to be upgrading the axles in this build because I want that to be the weak point. That way it doesn't destroy the inside because we are running a lunchbox locker, which you'll see, I'll explain all this stuff and show you guys what I'm going to be doing and how I'm bulletproofing it, and how I'm doing it so cheap. Um, a lot of people is like, you're wasting tons of money on a Dana 30 and it just ain't worth it. Get a 44 or go with one tons. And one tons are out of the option because I don't need one tons. I'm running a cheap of 35, so I don't need one tons. Um, I'm not blowing a whole lot of money on the 30. Um, we're going to be spending way less money than we did the eight and a quarter so we only got like maybe 300 bucks in this build and it's going to be super strong so make sure you stay tuned for that video it's coming out i'm going to be filming it this week um, we are going to be doing it outside so hopefully it's warm enough it's not raining so we're going to be pulling it out start tearing into this thing making it what it needs to be throwing it back in and you guys should see that video don't miss it this jeep was a learning experience for me and i wanted to record everything and we're about done with it. We just gotta do the front end and it'll be trail ready for this year. So make sure you tune in. If you haven't seen the eight and a quarter build, make sure you go back and check it out. Um, you don't need fancy tools. I did it in a little pop-up tent in the winter time. And that's the same way we're gonna be doing the Dana 30. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends.